Today we're going to put training wheels on a bicycle. Before you start, there's two things that you need to do. One, check air pressure in the tire and make sure it's at the proper inflation. The second thing you need to do is you need to measure your axle. You need at least three-eighths of an inch of unused thread on your axle. This one is, well, it's a lot more than three-eighths, but you want to double check that. If it's less than three-eighths of an inch, the training wheel nut that secures it could strip out, uh, the child's going to fall over. There are two types of training wheels. The first type utilizes a locking washer that has a little tongue on it that fits inside the slot on the frame. So it fits in like that. If you can imagine that nut not being there, this would fit in flush and that would lock into the frame. And then your training wheel comes off like that. This little piece is the only thing that prevents the wheel from twisting. This works fine if you're putting it on a 12 inch or a 16 inch bike where your child is not that heavy. What they're going to do is when they ride they're going to hit things that are going to want to bend the wheel backwards. And for a 12 inch bike this works fine but for a 16 not so fine. The second type of training wheel utilizes a stabilizing arm like this where this part fits up into the frame. This better secures the training wheel preventing it from kicking back when you hit bumps. This gives more support to the training wheel and is better on 16 or 20 inch bikes or if your child is a little bit heavy or aggressive. The way that you determine which size training wheel, because this type comes in two different sizes, fits your bike with a ruler you measure four and a half inches from the axle going forward. At that point on the frame you want to measure how tall it is. All right, This one is one inch at that point. So you want the training wheel that's one inch and bigger instead of one inch and smaller. If this frame size varies a little bit Generally, if it's, if it's smaller than an inch, the training wheels come with these little adapter pieces that you can click into place you slide it on like that and then you can see it doesn't really fit well, there's a gap here so you, you don't want to use that on this particular frame. If the frame were smaller diameter, uh, even those are too big, but you can kind of see where I'm going with it. You want that to fit over the frame and fit in tightly like that. So what you want to do is pull out all the component parts. And you're going to do a quick assembly. So you're going to get these little supporting axles. You want to get a little bit of grease. This is a trick that I learned a long time ago. Over time, training wheels are going to squeak. Every one of them does it. So you put a little dab of grease on the axle. You slide it into the wheel. And that keeps Dad happy for a long time. Assemble the arm. You're going to put a nut on it. And then you just get a 13 millimeter and a 17 millimeter wrench. And you're just going to tighten these down. After everything's tight, make sure your training wheel spins freely and you're going to do the same thing on the other side. So get your bolt, a little dab of grease. Washer on this. All right, that's tight. Spins freely. The first step is you're going to take off one axle nut at a time. Don't take them both off at the same time because you're going to lose all your adjustments for chain tension. So you take the nut off. 
that goes on. Training wheel goes on. I'm going to put the nut back in there. Now, don't make the nut super tight, but you want to make it tight enough to hold everything in place. The reason being is that this is still going to require some adjustment. Okay, it's right about there. It's snug, but it's not super tight. Then you're going to go over and do the same thing on the other side. Once again, don't tighten the nut down too much because we have to make adjustments yet. But you do want to push it over just a little bit. See my hand over here, I'm pushing the wheel this direction. Just put a little pressure on it, not too much. Okay, it's slightly snug. Now this part is fairly critical. See how much wobble you have in this bike? If you had that much wobble and your child is just learning how to ride, he's probably going to fall over. So you want to lower the training wheels, but you want to do it so that the bike is still perpendicular to the ground. To do that, you get a little hammer. Now, you remember the nuts are not tight, so if you tap on this, you're going to tap it down a little bit. And that's uh, a good amount of rock, probably just a hair less. And right, if it doesn't have enough, you can also tap from the bottom and push it up. You don't want to take out all the wobble, because when the child rides, they play this little game where they try to keep the training wheels off the ground. So you want to have just a little bit as they get more proficient at riding, you're going to want to raise the wheels up. So maybe after a month of riding, just raise them up a little bit. It'll have more wobble, but it gives them their balance. And before you finish, tighten the nuts back down. And just make sure it pedals smoothly.